Hey guys, this is Materi, and this is the 10th video in my sound design tutorial. And if you've been paying attention, um, like following along, you'll know now we're getting into dubstep basses. And this is probably, or these videos are probably going to be the most popular out of all of them. But um, I really hope that they're not. I hope that the earlier ones are really popular. So if you didn't watch those already, the first um, five or six go over Massive, and they go over everything in Massive. Now this is just like the practice of um, what we've already learned. So if you haven't watched them, go watch them. Try to understand, comment, or message me if you don't understand something, and I will um, I'll message you back or comment back and try to make everything as clear as I possibly can. So, <clears throat> in Massive, I always do a new patch. That's just because I'm too lazy to go into the fourth envelope and uh, make it look like this so the sustain is all the way up right away. So it's just easier. So, let's go over some really easy patches before we get into um, like more advanced patches. <clears throat> so, I guess I'll do just a basic wobble, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure I did, but let's just uh, do it anyway. So, when you think about a wobble, it goes in and out, like, wob, 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 wob. So you can hear, like, the either the volume is going in and out, or maybe a filter is, uh, like, cutting off certain frequencies. And you could do it either way, actually. The classic way is doing a filter, so let's just have that. Let's uh, lower the pitch so it's a low wobble. We could route that straight to filter one. And let's just put a low pass. So this is going to cut off all the high frequencies. And with an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, um, we can make it so that it takes off certain frequencies for a certain amount of time and then it um, moves the knob to bring certain frequencies back in over a certain amount of time. And do you hear that wetness? That's because of the uh, resonance, which I'm going to go over again and again. Um, the reason why is because that's boosting a certain frequency right there at the end of the low pass and it just has that character I uh, can't even talk I just woke up characteristic sound of uh, being wet in my opinion so I usually like a low resonance not a lot and you could hear there's a basic wobble now you can uh if you have massive 1.3.0, stop it, um, then you can actually automate this parameter down here in Ableton, and it's called mod5 hyphen den. You can see the red line going up, which means that you can automate it. <clears throat> In earlier versions, you can't, so you'd have to use the right knob, which is unsynced, which kind of sucks. <clears throat> but, but that's just a basic wobble. So again, just think about how the sound in your head is, um, how it sounds, the characteristics of it, like the envelopes are really important. Does it fade in, or does it... um? Is it like a fast attack and long release? It's all this like thinking. That's really what sound design is, is just thinking about your sound critically and trying to understand what makes your sound in your head the sound in your head. Um, so now, is there a lot of distortion? That type of thing. So let's do the same thing. So down two octaves, same wavetable. Instead of a filter this time, Let's put it on the amp. You 
you could hear how that already sounds a lot different. Than if we put it on a filter. And the reason why it sounds different <clears throat> is because you can still hear the low frequencies when the LFO is at the bottom of the cutoff as opposed to not being able to hear anything when the amp is on the bottom of the um, amp or the LFO is at the bottom of the amp. It's just like, uh, <clears throat> it's good for some things. Like, I know Zomboy does this one thing where I have it already made. He puts an LFO on an amp to get that. Ah. To get a certain sound. Like, uh, I don't remember what song it's from. But he uses an amp instead of uh, an LFO. I remember listening to one of his live streams and he was saying that it's just a basic sound with the uh, LFO on the uh, amp instead of a cutoff, which I thought was kind of cool. I never thought of doing that. So again, like sound design is always just thinking outside the box. So let's make a sound, <clears throat> another sound, how about just something simple. We could take <clears throat> polysaw and we could put Ben plus minus on it. And you really just want to play until you hear the sound that you really want. So I'm going to stay at C3. I'm just going to bring this down to you. So you can already hear we have a pretty awesome sound just from the uh, wavetable, which is like massive. This is massive right here. Like honestly, just finding these awesome wavetables and then working with them. So I just put on a, uh, another oscillator and what this oscillator is going to do is fill out the uh, higher frequencies of the sound and the reason you want to do that is just because you want your sound to sound full, not so empty. So let's do maybe a rock. Ben plus minus is what I always do. So that sounds pretty cool. Let's hear what um, phase modulation would do to it. And I'm just going to do this so I get a really distorted sound. Okay, and now I'm going to put this on monophonic. Yeah, so one thing I didn't go over in the previous videos is what this um, restart via gate means or via whatever you prefer what it means and when you check it that just means that your sound will always start from the same place when you hit a key so like sometimes when you make a sound and you press the button like or you press your key sometimes it can sound different if you have a lot of stuff going on so if you do restart via gate <clears throat> that means it'll always be the same exact thing So yeah, um, it'll start from the same wavetable position or whatever position. So like if you wanted the wavetable to start at a different position every time. So 
So when I move this, it's going to change the wavetable position at the starting point um, for oscillator 2 or oscillator 1 or oscillator 3 or the phase modulation that we have, any of the modulations. So it's definitely something to play around with and to try to understand. Um, you might not get it right away, but when you keep playing with it, you'll understand, <clears throat> just like with anything in Massive. So we have this sound. It sounds pretty cool, but we could do a lot more to it. So let's add some more distortion just by adding a um, insert one. And we can use Sign Shaper, which really destroys the signal. So you can really hear how that makes a huge difference. Now, one thing we might want to do to add some more distortion is just put our unison up to maybe six, seven, eight. and I gotta lower that a bit. And pan position to make it a little bit more wide. weirded out. This is not making any sound. Okay, so <clears throat> we can bring this. I usually always do this now is I put this up to serial and I bring my mix down to two and I put the volume for filter two. Now I'm just finding a good position for my um, wavetable position knob, or slider I mean, and that's just playing around really. Um, what else can we do? Let's add maybe, maybe we can add a double notch or a band reject, or we could just go with the scream. Um, I guess it depends on what style I'm going for. I'll just stay with a uh, scream filter for now. And I'll just put an envelope right here. Just from... And... Maybe I'll put in um, a performer on here instead. And that kind of sounds cool if I put an envelope on here. Maybe with the longer um, attack. Maybe then one right here in the red. So that sounds pretty good. And now for the effects, we can do a tele tube just for a little bit more and dimension expansion. High shelf, low shelf down. I always do low shelf down because I always add a sub bass in after. That's something to really think about when you're doing sound design <clears throat> is doing your frequencies right. And I might have an EQ tutorial a more advanced one later, but right now you don't have to worry about it so much. But if you're putting a sub bass in, cut off the low frequencies to pretty much all your um, tracks 
so you, it doesn't collide with your uh, sub bass. <laughs> No, I mean, that's a pretty cool sound. So yeah, um, just play around and put envelopes and stuff in LFOs and all that to really get some really weird sounds out, like um, finding the right uh, wavetables is a really important step in sound design. Um, if you know that you want distortion, add distortion on there. Um, add whatever you, you can hear in your head that makes the sound up and just put it on. So I guess in the next video, we'll be going over some more, um, more dubstep sounds trying to make some from scratch, hopefully helping out along the way. So thanks for watching this and stay tuned for the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, watch the other videos if you haven't already. I've said that a million times. And thanks for watching. Bye.